from downtown Scranton, this is Northeast Current. WQPX invites you to join us as we explore public affairs, current events, and arts and culture in Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. Now, let's meet today's guests on Northeast Current. Welcome to Northeast Current. I'm your host today, Bernie Mayapolsky, and we're with Neil Trama. And today we're going to talk about a really interesting connection that our area, Scranton, has with Columbus Day as a national holiday. And we're going to talk and maybe dispel some of the myths about Columbus and Columbus Day. Welcome to the show, Neil. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, glad to have you. So tell us, this is a fascinating story. So, so tell us, your dad was the instrumental in bringing Columbus Day well, as a national holiday. Yes, m you know, my dad being, you know, of Italian-American um, descent, always had an interest in Columbus Day and always thought that Columbus Day wasn't properly honored. I mean, it was recognized back in 1892 by, by President Harrison, but it was never an official holiday. Hmm. And years went on and, well, you know, some states recognized it, some didn't. So, he decided he wanted to make a movement to have, he just, it was his dream that he thought Columbus Day should be a national holiday for what Christopher Columbus did. So he started a campaign with the backing of Unico. He made his presentation to um, Scranton Unico, who brought it up to the National Unico Convention. And um, I think it was the 33rd National Convention in 1961, somewhere around there. And they sent it on to Washington and, you know, through a letter writing campaign to various mayors of cities named Columbus, writing, you know, to the different representatives and legislatures. Um, he got a movement going and he got started getting some press. In fact, he uh, was uh, supported by the two Pennsylvania senators at that time, Clark and Scott, you Scott. And um, he actually then received a letter from Pat Dugan, who was the um, assistant to President John F. Kennedy. And it got it got moving along, and it went through the steps in, in 1961 or 62. After going through the legislative process, um, it was passed to become a national holiday, and it you know it officially became a holiday in 1971. Well, so it was like a so, decade-long campaign. Yeah. So, and that, this was this. your father was from Scranton. My father, Is your father was still alive. No, my father passed away in 2004. Okay. Um, at the age of 90, he um, was originally born in Hayes. His his parents, my grandparents, came over from Italy. Um, and they lived in Hazleton? He, he was born in Hazleton. Moved my great-grandparents are from Hazleton, too. I mean, moved, they, the same thing. Moved to Scranton at the age of 12. Okay. And, you know, um, you know, got up, he was with the fire department, and he became a, you know, he got into very public speaking. In fact, okay. he was a member of the Dante Literary Society, and at that point in time, it was, what they were doing was teaching Italian-American immigrants the English language. So, I see. you know, it all, you know, started, you know, from, from there. So, tell our viewers, if not, what, what is UNICO? What does UNICO stand for? Do you? U UNICO, and I should have brought the, um, I should have brought, I meant to bring exactly what the UNICO, what the letters stand for. It is an Italian-American service organization. Oh, okay, yes. And um, it does a lot of, pub you know, it, it, it's a national to organization. The, you know, the Italian American. Right, but it, it does give scholarships and um, a lot of, you know, fundraising thing. It, it is uh, it's best known in this area, I think, for his Porchetta stand at the Porchetta uh, stand at La Festa. At La, La Festa Italian, which is a big fundraiser. I think the Unico for the, people in La Festa for, for the, sort of uh, uh, for the local, together. Um, for local of Unico, but it is a national organization. Just so our viewers know, my last name is Mayapolsky, but I am half Italian. Yeah. And my great grandparents did come from Hazleton and from Italy. Yeah. So maybe they even knew it's Buck Mountain. I know that was where my, I know my whole, the whole, so the, you know, the Italian Americans were maybe somewhat um, maligned 100 years ago. And it, and, you know, when we were first new immigrants to the country. And then as the years went on, I mean, um, we realized that Columbus is an Italian hero. Columbus right. was Italian, obviously. Yes. And you know, what my father tried to press is that, you know, it wasn't as much, he didn't want Columbus Day just to be a day for Italian Americans. He wanted it to be a day oh. for all Americans. And like he said, you know, um, was Columbus a perfect man? No. But um, if I said it, the day is not to honor Christopher Columbus, the man. It's to honor Columbus's discovery of America, the I event. See. The discovery of America is the holiday, not the man itself. Right, which is a huge and turning point in history, no matter how you look at it. I mean, correct. I mean, I mean, it was after that day. I mean, yeah, were there people in the Americas before Columbus? In all probability. 
but it seemed that that was the stepping stone to the explorers coming in from Europe and Spain, all the people who came after right. Christopher Columbus. colonizing the country, right. of course. Right, I think course. Christopher Columbus had three voyages after the uh, initial voyage. And that's, you know, I mean, look at, I mean, just what America is in today's history. I mean, sure. everything went from there. And, I mean, my father, he, you know, as I was saying, was saying, you know, if you didn't have a Columbus Day of Discovery of America, we wouldn't have a Memorial Day to celebrate, or True. maybe a Fourth of July, or a Thanksgiving Day. We definitely Day. wouldn't have a Fourth of July. You know? I mean, the Fourth of July is something to yeah. celebrate. So, I mean, the I mean, United States is the first country so, I mean, to... It, it was something, it was a passion of his, and, you know, he, it was a dream he had, and, it, you know, he just, because of Unico's backing, and getting the backing of different, um, you know, the legislature, I mean, yeah. it went right to Congress. He had hearings, I think it was 22 people who went and testified, you know, and this has never been done. You know, in the morning, by the afternoon, it unanimously passed. You know, the Congress and was was signed into law. And then there was a, it was passed like in 1961 or 62. It didn't become a holiday until 71, I guess, because the calendars are made so much in advance. Holy you can't cow, say ten years. You know, ten years is exactly right, which is you know they couldn't say, oh well, next year we'll have Columbus Day. They got the guy in the moon before they got Columbus Day to be a holiday, you right? You know what I mean? So, Same um, time, 61, they they did, they decided to land a man on the moon. You know, and 69, it, he was there. It's interesting. Even back in 1970, you know, time passes, and you know, people go on with life, and you sort of forget things. So I mean, I felt it was good. Because I got in the, you know, with, with Unico with this there. In fact, my father's grandson, my nephew, John, was the president of the Columbus Day Association, the Columbus Day Banquet every year. And, um, you know, he got it. So we tried to, you know, in memory, you know, of my dad, but just to, you know, reinvigorate and get people to realize that this happened, you know, back in the 70s, 30 years, and 40 years ago. I mean, who would know? It's a very interesting. People, people don't I remember. I, I'm not like talking to different even like school teachers and stuff that were gonna didn't realize this. So we you know we figured, you know, we had to bring this to the forefront of get, sure. you know, I mean, it is a source of pride to our my family and well, it should um, be. We just want, you know, people to realize that this national holiday had its roots here in Scranton. I mean, I think it's amazing. I mean I, I really didn't even know. I, I didn't realize I thought it was always a you know, I figured we always still have a yeah. celebrated I mean, Columbus Day. it's probably Day. one of the latest, you know, national, you know, holidays to be declared, you know. Yeah, right. I guess Martin Luther King Day is probably the next probably the one. There's probably no more room day. after that. You know, lucky like got I it said, in. It's on October the 12th is Columbus Day, but now it's one of the, the Monday, you know, the Monday holidays. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's fascinating. I mean, you know, there's some controversy about Christopher Columbus that some people demonize him that, you know, that, you know, the Indians... Native Americans lived here in a peaceful society and then that the Europeans took over and some people think that it, you know that it symbolizes that but I mean in reality we have to look at um, the what the world was like 500 years ago you know I mean um, I'm sure the Indians of course they didn't want to be taken over by the white Europeans um, but it's not like they were totally sitting um, here as I don't know, how would you say, just totally peace-loving people. I mean, you know, we like to fantasize about things. I mean, it was a different world then. It was a clash of cultures, you know. They, some were peace-loving, some weren't. And it's the same as some of the Europeans were and some weren't. And then when there's a clash of cultures like that, you know, these things are inevitable. But how could we say, you know, if, this, if Columbus didn't discover America, somebody would have ran into it. Would, it would have, somebody would have eventually got here. And I mean, what would... Let's look at it this way. What would the world be like today if there wasn't the United States of America the way it is today? For all our problems, I mean, I, I still think this is the greatest country to live in. Absolutely. The United States has definitely changed a lot. You know, there's no countries with constitutions until the United States came around, and then the many countries had constitutions. And another thing, you wouldn't believe probably, but before Christopher Columbus discovered America, he was an Italian, right? There was no spaghetti. They, mm. There was no spaghetti before that. Can't imagine there was life no without potatoes. spaghetti and meatballs. Now, huh? All these things that we think of as you know part of our thing, these things came from from the New World. Right after Columbus, 1520s when the Mayflower came. We know when Columbus sailed the ocean blue, right? 1492. Right. Correct. Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and you know 1520. Not much longer after that was the Mayflower. And that was the Pilgrims came here for religious mm -hmm. freedom. So you know it was a different world. You know, you could take different sides of it, but I mean, honestly, I think that, um, I mean, 1961 was a different year. Different year. We were talking about that before, right? How many people did different I things? Mean, and we didn't wear seatbelts in 1961. We rode in the back of pickup trucks, right? So, I, I mean, it, I, it takes a lot of moxie, right, to, to come from Scranton, Pennsylvania and say, hey, we think that there should be a Columbus Day to honor 
our Italian American heritage, not just that, the whole, like you said, the, the whole the, thing. The whole, like I said, it's the honor, it's really, the, the, it's the honor of the discovery of America. And right. And what's, what's, you know, the world comes, you know, because of America and what America means right. to the world. That's what my father had as the real meaning and the reason to celebrate Columbus Day. Right. The discovery of America. You know, it would be cool if we could get a little sign or a plaque or something by the Columbus statue in downtown Scranton to commemorate your father. That would be interesting. Is it, you know, I think there, there, maybe his kids. Yeah. Your father's children yeah. should start a letter writing campaign oh. to the county. Right. <laughs> well, see, I mean, we have a lot of people have been very, uh, you know, um, faithful to my father. I mean, Chris DiMaggio with Unico. I mean, Charlie Spano has been a very good um, uh, supporter of my father. And a lot of the people are. And we, we really appreciate that there. Yeah, I mean, I think so. We have a little plaque over there underneath the Columbus statue. I really think people should have it. I mean, I was fascinated to hear this. I mean, you know, I, people that know me, I like to know every little fact and trivia thing I could find about Scranton, and I, I did definitely didn't know that, 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 you know, the Columbus Day started right here somehow in Scranton, right? That's correct. Well, Neil, thank you very much. I, I'm glad to have you on and learn something fascinating. Thanks for coming along. Thank you very much for having Definitely. me. Definitely. Really thank you very it. much. Thank you. And so um, we'll be right back with more Northeast Current after these messages. Thank you.